What up, y'all? It's your boy Chance. Um, and I have something that I would like to speak about. And it does pertain to last night on top of many other things. And boy, last night was hard. It was very, very hard for me because... I didn't want to leave, but it was more or less, I was basically, in a way, forced to leave. But, uh, what up, Matt? How you doing, buddy? But, um, you guys are probably wondering why I announced my retirement last night to do my artwork. Um, it wasn't just to do my artwork. There was many reasons why, and I want to explain everything to you from beginning when my music career first started out and where it ended up and why I left. Like, I want to explain everything to you guys so you guys understand why I left the way that I did and why I left the music scene behind for good. As far as, like, you know, a main career. A lot of you may not know this, but my music career, ignore that guys, that was, I'm playing, I got Iron Thrones downloaded and I've been playing that and shit. But, um, you see, my music career started, it initially started in 2009 when I was first introduced to the music scene by my best friend from high school who was practically like my brother David Stone King who unfortunately lost his life on May 1st of 2009 from a drowning accident down at the gorge you that live in Ohio you guys know what the gorge is you guys know the park where the gorge is and what it's how it got its nickname but he was the one that introduced me into the music scene you see all throughout high school you know when i first got there i met him and we instantly clicked you know we became very good friends and i wound up getting to know his girlfriend and you know all his bandmates, his family, everything. And back then he had a band named Oxer, which is now named Sandcat. And their lead vocalist, Sandra M1, who's a very dear friend of mine. You know, I'm still very close with all the members, including the former members of the band. Of you know, Elixir, and I'm still very close to all the members of Sandcat to this very day. Like, I'm still very close to them. We still talk and everything. You know, I'm still, like, we talk all the time. So I see all their shows whenever they're here. And, you know, whenever the show's over, we usually hang out or whatever. So shout out to Sandcat. Shout out to all the former members of Elixir. Love every single one of you guys. Ricky, Sam. You guys are awesome. Sandra, everybody from Sandcat, you guys fucking rock. Shout out to the entire Stone King family. I love you guys. You guys are pretty much my second family. I love you guys. But, you know, he was the one that introduced me into the music scene. And like I said, you know, I was always going to their shows. I was always going to their practices, you know, during school, after school, you know, whenever I could. 
And, you know, like I said, with his passing in 2009, you know, that really, it took its toll on me in a pretty hard way. Like, I was broke down for, you know, a pretty good seven to eight months. Like, I was kind of lost. Didn't touch my guitar or anything at all for that whole time span because I was so destroyed that, you know, I just lost my best friend. You know, and I didn't really know what to do. But, you know, skip ahead past that. You know, I pick up my guitar, I get back into the music scene, and I wind up transferring schools a couple times. Well, actually, one time. Well, yeah, I transferred a couple times. But the first transfer from North High School, where I first met David, to Garfield High School, which is where I met some of my closest friends and ultimately wound up meeting those that would eventually become my bandmates as well as my friends. You know, I met them there. We formed the local band known as Laced in Sickness. And a weekend after school and almost every day, like we were constantly doing stuff like, when we weren't in school or we weren't doing our classwork, we were always hanging out. We were always in the music room and stuff, you know, just just practicing, you know, whenever we could. You know, we played a few local shows here and there. So, I mean, we weren't the stranger to, you know, performing. And, you know, ultimately, I wound up transferring schools, but that didn't affect the band at all. And the reason from Garfield is actually for a stupid reason. I was sticking up for a friend who was wrongly accused of something that she did not do. And I ultimately got wrongly expelled for doing so. But that didn't affect the band at all. Like, even though... You know, it cut our school time down for practiced on the weekends in my basement. We wrote songs, you know, recorded our asses off, practiced our asses off. And, you know, that was around the time that I was at East High School when I got expelled from Garfield High School, which is where I originally met all the members of Waste and Sickness. But, you know, I wind up leaving high school because of the fact that our principal at East High was actually racist against whites. And me not knowing it, like, I had no clue. But, you know, I ultimately wound up leaving, even though I was supposed to graduate with my class. You know, I wound up leaving because they wouldn't let me graduate. And, you know, 2012 is around when I had left. But fast forward past, you know, me going X and this and that and yada, yada, yada. You know, I get out. I get back into doing my thing and whatnot. And the band links back up. And, you know, we practice again. But around that time is when our guitarist at the time wound up falling into drugs. And as soon as he fell into drugs, our lead vocalist, Brian Hildebrand, followed suit. But the bad part is Brian fell into it a lot harder than all the others did. Like, all the others tended to follow suit. I was the only one that stayed away from it. Well, myself and our drummer is the only one that really stayed away from it. Our drummer actually wound up moving out of state because his dad actually got a job offer in another state and he wasn't able to stay here. So he wound up moving out of state, which that did suck, but you know, it is what it is. 
But fast forward past that, I wind up doing things on my own from there on out. And, you know, I start sending out demos to record labels. You know, I start finding my own sound, my own style. Now, keep in mind, before that, I was already, you know, making beats and instrumentals on the side just for fun. I wasn't taking them seriously. But fast forward to after the band had split. And, you know, all the other members of the band. Like, I stayed where I'm at now. Our drummer left state and all the other members basically went to jail for drug addiction and all kinds of stupid shit. But fast forward past that. All right, so it's around 2013, you know, I started doing my own thing. And, you know, and that's when I meet up with my ex, Heather, and everything kind of goes bad for a while. And it was good and bad. It was a rocky relationship for about three to four years. Not going to lie. It sucked. But, you know, I wind up doing my own thing. You know, I start getting into making beats. I start, you know, making my own songs, recording my own demos, you know, mixing, mastering, all of that. And, you know, I started sending out demos. And around that time is when I met the legendary major underground music artist who's also a local native around here. Um, his name is Zach Higgs, also known as Bob Higgs, or more commonly known as Possessed One. You know, he really taught me and tutored me in the ways of music. You know, really took me under his wing and showed me, you know, how to do what I do. You know, he really taught me how to be smart about it. And, you know, eventually I wound up meeting up with Michelle Biro, who's also a very dear friend of mine. And I actually wound up getting connected to her son, who's another major underground artist. And he really took me in and showed me the inner workings. You know, her son, Coda, who's a major underground artist in his state, really showed me, you know, the ins and outs of what I need to do to really make it excel. And I did all those things. You know, I sent out demos. I tried setting up shows that never got done because of people not wanting to give me a chance. But every day, I would send out 10, 20, 30 demos to different record labels all over the country. Just that entire time span, every day I was recording and sending out demos to different labels. And I was always wondering why I wasn't getting a response back. And there was one label that was interested in my work at the time. And it was it was a major label, not going to lie. It was a pretty big name label. And they were looking for new artists. And my buddy Zach, a.k.a. Possessed One, you know, he got them to talk to me and stuff. You know, I was down for it because they were at a club where he was at and they were really interested in my work. And I mean, when I mean interested, I mean, like, they wanted me. Like, they were asking who I was and yada, yada, yada. And he gave them my info, how to get a hold of me. So, you know, he's there at the club, you know, giving them the info. And he was like, you know what? I can, you know, call him up right now on FaceTime. You know, and you can talk to him yourself, you know, to make it easier. And, they're like, all right, sure, yeah, you know, go for it. So he winds up FaceTiming me on Facebook. And, you know, I wind up talking to him and stuff. And I kid you not, I never got hurt so badly in my entire life as I did at that moment. Like, it really crushed me. And they flat out told him to my face in front of me that they like my sound, but because of my 
physical appearance and how I look, they're afraid that I would get messed with and picked on. And they didn't like my looks. They hated how I looked. They loved my sound, but they didn't think that my sound or my physical appearance suited my sound. They wanted me to change who I was. And ever since when I fought them on out, I, I confronted them. I'm like, look, don't you think you're kind of being, you know, unfair? I explained to them, I'm like, look, you know, you're being really unfair. You're not giving me a fair chance. And they didn't give two fucks. They did not care one bit. And ever since whenever a label gets a hold of my work, they constantly judge about my physical appearance and not my music. Like, they listen to my music, they love my music, but they hate my physical appearance for some reason. It's like, I cannot help how I look. And every day I would constantly fight and fight and fight every day and night. I would record my ass off, send in my work, and what would I give back in return? Discrimination, judgment, belittlement, being put down, bullied, every day all over social media because of these record labels. All because they don't like my physical appearance. Every day. So what did I decide to do? I took it into my own hands and tried to make it on my own. And it, it worked for a little bit. You know, I got a few cents from Spotify, which I can only make up to, ten, I can, I have to make up to $10 in order to, you know, be able to, you know, do that, which that's whatever. But here's the kicker. When I found a muse, and I quote, this directly from a muse whatever you make you keep a hundred percent of no matter the price no matter what however much you make you will be able to withdraw that my friends is a bald faced lie and you want to know how i know almost 20 people bought my debut album blackout which is my debut dubstep album off of, you know, Amazon, Google Play Store, all of that. They all bought the album. You know, they bought the entire album, whether it was family, friends, you know. I had several people, like, literally, I checked. I checked the analytics, and over 20 people liked the album so much that they actually went out of their way to actually buy the full album. They loved it. Like, they absolutely loved it. They loved the debut song, or the hit single off of that song. I, like, everybody was jamming to that song. They were loving it. You know, so I was actually, you know, getting somewhere. But I went back recently to check my payments to see, you know, what's going on. Do you guys know that a muse ripped me off? Because of them, because of a muse, I lost over a thousand dollars in payment. I lost over a thousand dollars because a muse decided to keep half of what I made. So what am I stuck with now? 87 cents from Spotify and streams and shit like that. And, you know, and that really got me down. And I just recently found out about that last week. I checked the muse and I've only got like 87 cents. I don't have the thousand dollars that they owe me from my fans buying my album in full. From places like Amazon, Google Play Store, iTunes, all of that. 
I had 20 plus people buying the album flat out. And what do I get in return? I get ripped off my money. I get cheated out of So needless to say, the big reason why I can, why I left the music scene wasn't just because of, you know, discrimination. It was because of the bullying, because of being ripped off. And I got tired of it. I got sick to death and tired of being ripped off. And here's another thing that I do not like about a muse. I mean, it's good for starting out. Don't get me wrong. It's very good for starters. For if you're just starting out, it's really good. If you're looking to make a little bit of money, you know, here and there, and you're just getting into the music scene, that's fine. That's great. I definitely recommend it for that. But here's the one thing I hate about a muse. I cannot upload my original own artwork my way. I have to do how they see fit, how they want it to be. Because I had some very, very cool, amazing artwork already set out for the Blackout album and everything. I actually wound up also releasing my major hit single for my alternative rock fans, the song Please Notice Me, which is like literally my biggest hit song on YouTube right now with over 400 plus views. And, you know, and that song did really well, surprisingly. Like, surprisingly, that song did very well. Everybody loved it. You know? But the main reason why I left the music scene is because of the fact that I got... Amuse owes me over a thousand dollars for all my fans who bought my music, for all my family, my friends, my fans that listened to my music, bought the full album of Blackout. But what did I get in return for them buying it? I got ripped off. And, you know, at that point, you know, I took a step back and, you know, I started recording, you know, the short mini album or the mixtape or whatever you want to call it called No Hate Society, which is an all rap album about bullying. Well, it's a rap slash metal album about bullying, suicide, and ultimately what leads up to the bullying, to these kids coming back as adults and murdering and doing these school shootings and what it's like to be bullied and what it's like to be on the edge of suicide. As I've been there myself, so I know firsthand what it's like. I know what it's like to want to end your own life as I've attempted it many times and survived from being bullied and everything like that in high school. So I know what that's like, and I wanted to make an album to help people, to show them that they're not alone. And when I was in the middle of recording one for the album, um, it required a melodic screen section, so I was doing it and recording my part, and I noticed my throat wasn't feeling right. So I waited out a few days and I noticed that my throat started to swell. So my mom made an appointment and stuff. We went to the doctor and it turns out I had blown out my voice. And like, instead of talking like this, I was talking like this right here. I couldn't do much like that. Like, I was talking like that in a low, whispery voice. And 
And because of that, you know, the doctors have been ordering me to take a month break every so often. And, you know, I took a month break last month. You know, I took a break, recorded, and now I'm on another break again. But during this last break, you know, I really still, I wanted something to do. You know, I couldn't think of anything like, you know, I'm good with gaming, but I do need to get a new Wii remote, so I'm not able to do much on my Wii right now, as my Wii remote's going bad, and I need to get a new one, because I've had it for like four plus years. I mean, during that time, I was like, all right, you know, since I can't do gaming, you know, what else can I do? Like, what can I really sink my teeth and do that can make me some money while I'm waiting, you know, while I'm on break? And, you know, I was sitting down and I was thinking, I'm like, you know, I haven't released any artwork in a while, so why not do that? And within the first couple of days, you know, when I started doing my artwork, I really started to gravitate towards doing my abstract art like I had a long time ago when I was in high school. And it was it's a style that I really... I hate Iron Throne sometimes. I love the game, but I hate that sound. So you guys hear it, ignore it. There ain't nothing that can be done about it. That's just a notification saying that my stuff's ready, which I'll check here in a couple hours. But, you know, I really started to gravitate towards doing my artwork again, especially, you know, like I said, the abstract art style and stuff like that. And, you know, and I really thought about it. For a long time, like, I thought about it long and hard. I'm like, you know, what should I do? Like, should I do this as a career? And, you know, what should I do? And at first, it started out to be a side thing for whatever, you know. You know, it was supposed to just be this little side thing that I was doing. But then I started noticing over time when I started releasing my artwork, onto Instagram, Twitter, um, YouTube, Tumblr, Facebook, all these different places on social media, people really started to react. And they started to react positively. And so I wound up making an Instagram strictly for my artwork. And I noticed within that first 24 hours, Within 24 hours to 40, within 24 to 48 hours, I went from zero followers on Instagram, from no post at all, to posting up like 12 pieces. And right now I'm sitting at almost, I think like 52 followers on Instagram alone. And like one or two on Twitter and a couple here and there on Tumblr and Twitter and stuff like that. But... You know, that's when I realized, hey, you know, I need to be doing this for a career. So, I mean, it's not that I wanted to leave the music scene. It's the fact that I got bullied and badgered and basically, you know, discriminated against to where they kind of, it kind of forced me to leave in a way along with being screwed over, like it basically forced me to leave. Even though I didn't want to, it was kind of forced upon me. But, you know, now that I'm doing music, and I did go through some trouble yesterday, you know, with the art police, and I had no idea art police even existed until yesterday on the internet. I had no clue. But I started putting out some of my best work, like my truly best work, like my majorly advanced work, my really good stuff. You know, my high-end, high-quality, you know, portraits and everything like that. Because I wanted to break away from my abstract work, you know. Like, I've been doing that for like the last week, so I figured, you know, why not take a break from that style and, you know, paint and do something else. You know, do a different style. And I picked back up on my advanced work. Because if you guys don't know, 
I grew up drawing my entire life. My entire family is full of artists. Um, my great great grandmother was not only an author but an artist. She had written her own book and self published it and put it out for the public as well as did all the artwork in it. You know, she drew when she was alive. My older sister Sally Ann draws, my sister Dale Ann draws. Um, my cousin Cassandra, she draws. It goes down the line and I kind of, you know, it, it's in my bloodline. You know, I've been drawing since I can hold a crown at the age of four. So, you know, and I didn't really think anything of it at first. I was like, all right, you know, make a little money here and there. And then, you know, really good friends who I grew up with, like literally, I've known this kid since I was like 10 years old. Like we fucking grew up together since grade school. Like he's literally, he's my brother, like he's family. And he started noticing, he's like, dude, you should take this into consideration as a job. Like you could really go somewhere with this. And so I did. And that's when I started posting on my really advanced work and everything like that. And that's when I started getting bullied and basically was forced to shut down my deviant art and a couple other things as well. Now, as for my official um, art site where you guys can buy my art, um, I did have to shut that down and make a a whole new one, but it wasn't due to the incident with the people like falsely accused me of stealing their work. Um, that was actually due to a something going on with the site or whatever. Like it was technical difficulties within the inner workings of the site. So I literally had to do that and I'm literally right now rebuilding it back up from the ground up. Um, adding a couple new things. Um, I won't be selling my comic book hero art on there, unfortunately, because I don't want to risk, you know, that issue again. But I will be selling my abstract art, you know, and stuff like that on there. I will be doing a newsletter, a mailing list. So if you guys want to get news updates, you guys can. Um, and if, and only if you guys want it, I may end up releasing some of my music here and there on there as well. I haven't decided yet, but I might. But um, as I said, guys, I do hope that you understand now why I was basically forced out of the music scene and into the art scene. And it, it sucked. I hated leaving the music scene, you know, because I really enjoy, you know, helping people through my music. But with me being bullied and badgered, belittled, and just ultimately discriminated against, you know, there was nothing. I literally had no choice but to leave. It got so overwhelming because I would constantly face, you know, this hatred every day. Day. like and it wasn't just from labels it was from everybody you know I would get people on YouTube bashing on me on Instagram just it got to be overwhelming but with my artwork it's not so overwhelming because I can do what I want in my style And, you know, and I can take my time about it without having to worry about deadlines or anything like that. But like I said, if and only if you guys want it and you guys show me that you want me to release my music bad enough again, then I will go back and I will release my new genre that I've actually mastered and created called Phantom Step, which is, it's kind of a sub-genre of dubstep. 
Um, and what Phantom Step? Phantom Step is comprised of is chill wave risers and synthesizers and pads. Um, hip hop beats as well as EDM beats, dubstep drops and rock and metal guitars every now and then along with the like a little bit of classical mixed in. Sorry there guys, you guys don't know, I did actually wind up getting a new um, a ringtone on here. It's actually, um, you guys are fans of WWE, I got Seth Rollins intro as a notification and the AJ Styles theme as my ringtone. So shout out to AJ Styles, um, shout out to Seth Rollins, and shout out to everybody that won their matches last night at SummerSlam, and especially a major shout out to Rowdy Ronda Rousey for kicking that little bitch Alexa Bliss's ass. And major shout out to Roman Reigns, the big dog. Congratulations, guys, on all your wins. Like, SummerSlam was amazing last night. Not going to lie. Like, it was incredible. But, anyways, back on topic. Kind of got off track there because of the ringtone, the you know. But you know, I basically left because I kept on getting bullied, badgered, belittled, and basically just discriminated against and hated on every day to the point to where it got so overwhelming that I just couldn't take it anymore. Like no matter what I did. No matter what I did, I was always hate every single day. No matter what I did, no matter what kind of style I put out, no matter what song I released, whether it was good, bad, whether it was a good, a good track, bad track, whatever, I was constantly getting hate. And it got so bad that I actually wound up reaching out to a um, group called Heart Mob that deals with online bullying. And I'll admit, they did help me out in a very, very big way. Like, they really did help me that I reached out to them and talked to them and told them, hey, you know, like, this is what I'm dealing with. Can you guys do something? And sure enough, within that first day, day and a half after telling them, you know, what was going on, and they actually stepped up and helped me out. And so I do owe a very big thank you to Heart Mob. You guys did help me out a lot, and I do appreciate all your help. But I hope you guys understand now why I left. And like I said, if and only if you guys want me to release my new style bad enough onto the shop, only then will I release my music onto there. And it won't even be an all-time thing. It'll be like, say, like a once a week deal. And where I'll release like a little miniature album here and there. But uh, I do hope that you guys understand now why I did what I did. Um, like I said last night, I do hope that you all support me in as far as, you know, my artwork goes. Um, like I said, I am rebuilding the site right now as we speak due to technical difficulties and issues within the site and the servers. So I had to, I had to go in and rebuild everything and whatnot, which sucks, but the site will be up and running, I'd say probably by noon, if that, like it might not even be noon, it might even be sooner, depending on how fast I get it done. But, um, I want to say thank you guys 
And again, I do hope that you guys understand why I did what I did and why I'm doing what I'm doing with my art. Um, I do eventually want to get my into like a real gallery. I do want to do that, but first I need to make some sales. You know, I need to do that. I need to, you know, draw in customers that want to buy my stuff. I need to do that. That is key right now. That is my main focus is to create my art and sell it and make money so I can you know, put out, and I am going to be putting out a book too through lulu.net, which is a great self-publishing site. I will be releasing an art book very, very soon. So you guys will be able to buy that as well. But like I said, guys, I do hope that you guys do support me 100% and truly understand why I left the music scene the way that I did. It's not that I wanted to, it's that I had no choice. I was forced out because of greed, bullying, hatred, and discrimination. As I'm going to hop off here and get back to working on the official art site, and I'll see you guys later. Love you guys. Peace.